Boomer. I change your bum life. You fight me, it's a celebration. Yeah, I would beat you when you sign to fight me, it's a celebration. You ring back home, you ring your wife. Baby, we done it. We're rich, baby. Conor McGregor made us rich. Break out the red panties. We're rich, baby. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the fifth round. It's always your boy, Steven Mousteris. And man, I'm just sitting here talking about UFC 280 this morning. Um, I did an apology video to Blah Muhammad for once calling him the most boring fighter in UFC history. But after UFC 280, completely changed my mind. And then I did a video about Benio Darius deserving everything that he's ever wanted because he's done everything the UFC has ever asked of him. And it's like, hey, man, let's, uh, let's get his ball rolling. So this leaves me... Probably the biggest topic currently of UFC 280 of Saturday, Sean O'Malley, Sugar Sean O'Malley versus Piotr Jan in the quote-unquote controversy of Piotr losing and Sean getting the dub. Let me just put it this way. I have never been so excited for a fighter other than like clearly like I, I was a big John Jones guy when he first was coming up. I like ever since his first fight, he fought his first fight ever was on my birthday for the UFC, his first fight in the UFC ever. And ever since then I was hooked. Like I just knew you just see certain people that over the years you see them and you're like, dude, those guys are gonna be the truth. They're gonna be champions one day. And it was like I was I was more excited. Clearly, like when they do bigger things like that, like when Steve A B D C to be a double champ, when when Connor became double champ, like you get excited for those things, but for like the beginning of somebody's career to make a big impact this was one of the more exciting times ever like clearly we all know the storyline sean o'malley you know probably he's definitely a top five cash cow in the ufc top five most watched but he's still like an up-and-comer he hasn't he hasn't proved himself yet his only two big big name fights have ended in controversy cheeto vera the whole leg thing people thought he broke his leg whatever just hit just hit a fucking nerve and kills his leg but then you know then he fights uh pedro munoz who we all thought you know sean could win should win but it was going to be a really high level test with somebody who's that fucking smart and that much is that much uh, experience in mma goes out there i thought he was winning that fight it was too early to really say because pedro's a dog he could have done anything but you know, is keeping the pace, but clearly gets, you know, no contest, eye pokes and shit, whatever. So then they just throw him right into the number one contender or possibly think number one fighter in at 135. Like he, he easily could have won. I didn't think he won the second fight against Al Jermaine, but he did. He was on his way to fucking destroy him in that first fight. And if he didn't get the back taken in the second fight, he could easily be our champ. And I know some people think he still is the champ, but you know, I'm not going to sit here and talk about this fight too much and break it down because we all watched it. But I, I will say I watched it twice because Saturday when I was at B-Dubs watching this shit, I had the Ohio State game on, which was a blow. It was 50-something to nothing. And then where I live, it was a huge rival the high school football game that takes over the fucking state. And it's annoying as fuck. Not state, but at least a couple counties. And it's stupid. Nobody cares about high school football unless you're playing it. But anyway, those it was all on. So I couldn't hear any of the commentating. Uh, so I went back, which I was happy. It kept me very unbiased, and I love watching them sometimes without, depending on who's announcing, because I do love the John Anik, DC, and Joe Rogan crew, but, like, I do like Paul Felder and Michael Bisping, but I sometimes it's like, hey, man, like, I, I'd rather watch these fights in silence, because I know what I'm watching, and to watch it without the noise, I definitely thought Sean O'Malley pulled it out two, two to one. I thought it was close. Third round, really close. First round, really close. In second round, I didn't. Th I thought it would have been a takeaway for Sean for sure, but then he got rocked, and then clearly I thought he lost the second round. But to hear he's getting robbed and all this shit has really been annoying me because it's it's such a close fight. Like if it if it's that big of a robbery and Piotr Jan should have won that easily, this should be on Piotr Jan. He should have easily taken care of the number eleven guy. And I'm not saying he should have. Like that's shit's hard to do. But in my my opinion here, like he's like a three to one favorite, four to one favorite going into it. It's like, how is it Sean O'Malley's fault for making this a good fight? Like I know this sounds biased, I know, but first round, we all kind of were talking about, you know, Sean O'Malley probably wins first round just because Piotr starts slow, starts slow, whatever. Round two, like we said, I thought, I thought he, I thought round one, I thought O'Malley outstruck him that like number wise, and I think that's the only reason I, I give him round one. I'm not saying easily. Round two, like I said. He had him rocked and then takes the meanest left overhand. But 
gets rocked himself, gets taken down in, you know, third round. I th- if that without that knee, I think Sean O'Malley loses for sure. But that knee does the most damage. I think that's like the number one rule of fighting is like, hey, who does the most damage should win. And you know, going into the into the uh, after after okay, so after the second round, this is where I'll start. Second round, Sean O'Malley gassed, absolute gas. Like you, if you watch his pods and you listen to him on YouTube all the time and all this shit that he's doing now, he's talking all week. Like fifteen minutes is such a short time. Like I wish I had more time with him. After 10 minutes of fighting, after about 7 minutes of fighting, he was so nervous fighting Piotr Jan that you could tell he was gassed. And after that second round, I was like, oh no, this is it. He was putting on such a great performance. He was showing he belongs there. But Piotr always takes off at the end of fights. And Sean's looking tired. And boy, was I fucking impressed. Sean did some shit where he just closed his eyes. You just watched it. He just takes some deep breaths and he just opens his eyes and he's back into it. It literally... I don't know what he did. I don't know what he told himself mentally, but he did it. And to watch him come in there and at least damage him to that level and maybe even outstrike him in my level, like in my opinion, and do more work than him in round three or as much, that's that's what it is right there. And I hate I hate that it's – I hate to say this, but all fights are, you know, scenario-based. Like if Sean O'Malley had that same performance against – anybody in the top like 10 to 15 rank or even like to 15 to 20 rank then yeah okay we're gonna be sitting there like yeah he probably could have done better he should have done better that's probably an l on sean o'malley but since he's fighting the number one fighter like okay let's uh let's just put that in perspective now like he shouldn't have even been in there from what a lot of people are saying he can't wrestle he gets taken down he gets up how many times phenomenal like he answered every question we could ever have and my biggest takeaway here is I don't know how people are dogging him for getting a dub. It's not his fault that the judges give him that way. I do think, from my point of view, I think he did more damage. I think he outstruck him. I know he got taken down, but he got up so quick and so easy every time and showed all of Like, I know he got tripped there or swept a little bit. That was pretty funny. And he went for it back, and it didn't work. But just you can show his confidence growing. And while we were waiting for the scorecards, and like I said, I couldn't hear it, so I could tell by the way that Bruce was reading it, though, that it was split at the time. But I knew, I told myself, I was like, man, I, if I was in that ring right now, if I was Sean O'Malley's coach, I'd just be hugging him saying, dude, look, like even if you lost that fight, you didn't lose that fight. You won that fight just because of what everybody had their expectations of. You just showed your stock is four billion times more than what we ever thought it would. You do fucking belong in here. That's another thing, too. UFC should be geeked right now. 135 is so fucking stacked. Number 16 could fucking give the number one or Alderman Sterling at least a nice little run. It's that fucking stacked right now, and I'm loving it. I'm loving every bit of it. I was so excited for Sean O'Malley. Even if you think Piotr Jan won, there's still rounds that you have, or at least a round that you have to give to Sean, and at least it's a 29-28. Like, that's not a... That's not a blowout fight. But I am I am going to sit here and say, though, there needs to be more draw, draws in the UFC. Dude, I talk about it all the time. I've said it on here billions of times. Let's all go back to school, high school shit, middle school. We all remember the the school fights at the lunch table or we all meet in the parking lot, watch the fights, like, and everybody's gossiping about it. Like, oh, who won? Like, oh, well, Dakota hit this dude once and then he got taken down and then it was just a little hug and fight and then... All the teachers picked him up or all our friends got in the way. And it was like, yeah, nobody won. It was it was a draw. Nobody really did anything. And it's like, you know, there's not always a winner. Like, i am be honest. And there's the street fights out there that these guys both, like, piece each other up. And once, once of them, each of them get hit once, they don't want to get hit anymore. And you got the respect for each other. Like, there's not always a winner in fighting. And especially that his high-level MMA that we're watching now. Yeah. My opinion, Sean O'Malley won the the stand up. Yeah, my opinion, Peter Yan won the grappling. You know, even though I thought Sean did very well and answered all the grappling questions he could, he got up. He did some crazy sweeps, or not sweeps, but he did some crazy reversals and had some crazy, crazy fucking um, exchanges there where some of the scrambles were insane. He had that one where he spun out or like twisted out of it. Just, just beautiful shit. So. It's like, there's got to be, like, I liked what Aljo was saying after his his win. It's like, dude, there's got to be a cut and dry thing, like, where, you know, the the refs or whoever, like, our judges, we have a criteria for these fighters so they know what's going on because Sean O'Malley and Pure Dion are both just fighting the way that they thought they should win or they could have won. And I do kind of hate that one of them's got to go out on a loss because even Piotr, 
yeah, you technically lost, and yeah, it kind of looks bad for you that you got beat up or you were getting touched up and having that close of a fight with Sean O'Malley already that he's 11th ranked. Like, in his head, he took the loss. Even if he would have got the nod, Cuerter's really pissed about this fight. I guarantee it. So, But this is the other thing, too. Judges, we're ruining careers out here. And this is my this is my Piotr Jan backup case here is like Piotr Jan gets fucked absolutely fucked against T.J. Dillashaw's first fight, but it was because of his knee. Second fight probably shouldn't even have been a fight if he didn't illegally knee him, which is is doing. But goes to it. It's a it's a decision fight with him and Aljo. The second fight, I thought Aljo's control time was what really earned the win. But you could easily give Piotr Jan. If we're going rounds, you could easily give him two two, and it all came up to that first round. And then the same with O'Malley. Like, dude, he went from being the champion to now he's on a two fight losing skid. Which now he's going to have to fight, probably at least get two more wins to even get back to the belt. And that's even if he's lucky because one thirty five so fucking stacked. So my heart does go out to him as well. But. This definitely was a moral victory for Sean O'Malley more than anything, and I, I'm not mad at whoever wins, because regardless, I'm telling you guys right now, like, yeah, Sean O'Malley's probably going to go get the title fight next if they want to do the numbers and everything, but let's just say, even if he would have somehow technically lost on the split decision against Piotr Jan, that man's still getting the jump of all lifetime. He's probably, instead of going to number two or number three today, that he's going to be probably in the ranking or number five, like... He still would have been maybe one or two back, even if he would have lost, just for the performance he put on. And I think, honestly, I think if he would have lost that with that same performance, I think people would be sitting here yelling the opposite right now. If like, wow, yeah, he lost, but look at what he did to Piotr. He fucked him up. He had him in trouble more than he's ever been in trouble. So this is the this little wacky, lovely fucking sport of MMA. So. I, Sean O'Malley, do your fucking thing. I'm so fucking proud of you, dude. Happy fucking birthday. And Piotr Jan, keep your head up. You're still going to be a fucking dog. You're still one of the best fighters ever. So it's been the fifth round. Steven Mousteris. Let's go, boys.